Greetings to all. I would first like to thank Dr. Pamposh Kumar and Dr. Nagaratnam for having invited me to give this talk. I am going to be reflecting on sanitation and sustainability and uh, how well we have done. In doing so, I hope to highlight some salient points about the importance of communication. Now, we have done actually very well in terms of improving access to sanitation. In the year 2000, you see, India, in India, open defecation stood at almost 74%. But it was not the worst in the world. Now, today, after 22 years, from 74, it has come down to 15. So it has made, uh, we have made a great progress. Again, while the Indian population increased, okay, with 300 million more people, we still managed to bring down the uh, percentage of people practicing open defecation. So uh, certainly it's not only increasing the number of toilets that made this happen, but also effectively communicating to the people the importance of toilets. So we can, we can pat ourselves in the back and be proud. And it's also wonderful that India took the lead in putting sanitation as a national program. Other developing countries followed suit. Again, it was a Swachh Bharat program which said it's not universal access that matters, but elimination of open defecation. This change in the nuance changed everything. It's not ensuring installation of toilets, but ensuring behavioral change. This change was also adopted by the United Nations in its Sustainable Development Goals program. So, is it all that good? Well, now that I have talked about the good side, I also want to talk about some of the downsides. And I'm going to talk about three downsides. First of all, the technology. You see, there are various kinds of decentralized sanitation system technologies. And what we have uh, adopted and diffused and constructed is actually the cheapest, but also one which is contaminating. That is, after some years, in many parts, especially in coastal areas, deserts, granites, it, it is going to cause problems, environmental problems. So on the one hand, you have uh, improved access to sanitation, that is worked on the social side of sustainability, but on the other side, there is an environmental problem. And this environmental problem affects ultimately the health of people. And this is being proved. Secondly, there is, a, there is another problem of sustainability of construction. Because when we go on this target mode, things are not always done well. And when there is a construction defect and no agency to solve it, there is a slippage. When the toilet stops functioning properly, it is abandoned and then there is a bandwagon effect so that we have in India villages that had become ODF that have gone back to OD, that is open defecation. So there can be slippage. It's not sustainable, the behavioral change. Thirdly, there is um, problems of trust even in the data. So you know, reputed journals, they've all said about how the indicators have been chosen in such a way as to reflect a particular reality. 
and the Indian government was heavily criticized. I just want to say that even at the UN, there are a lot of data discrepancies because we still do not know how to measure things properly. And so there are problems of communication. So communication, bad communication, does not build trust, it ruins trust. So how to tackle this problem? I propose that we need to adopt a design thinking framework, which means thinking about the other party and co-creating solutions rather than imposing solutions. I am sure many of the delegates today, many of the speakers would have told similar things. So this is just re-emphasizing their points in the context of sanitation. So you see, there are various challenges that we have to address still to really ensure behavioral change as well as protection of the environment while ensuring that the health impact can be harvested. So various stakeholders are involved in all these challenges that I have put here, but communication with each of them attuned to their perspective, to their capabilities, to their knowledge base already is all very, very important. And here is where I find mistakes, mistakes being made at every level. At every level, there is inadequate and unempathetic communication. Let me give a few examples. So this is a logo of the UN for World Toilet Day. But is it well designed? No, it's not the logo of the toilet used by most people in the world, especially the poor. And this is a water draining toilet, the Western toilet. It requires greater maintenance. And this is because Policymakers, like in the UN, they are totally, dis they're not totally, but they are disconnected enough with the reality of the poor that they make logos which do not talk to the poor. So this is talking to others, perhaps the financiers to make them understand, but we need to be more connected. Similarly, you see the UN, is having clean water and sanitation as this logo. But where is a toilet? Are people expected to defecate in the pond showing behind, shown behind? So this is again because not all topics are given equal treatment, even though they may be very much interconnected. Without safe sanitation, there's going to be groundwater contamination. So there is no point in making more and more reverse osmosis plants or RO plants when pit latrines are contaminating the groundwater. And then again, with respect to behavioral change, it's supposed to be community led, but I do believe that shaming people is not the right way. And some overzealous officials may even do wrong things with it. So this has to be treated with caution, communication, even if it involves somewhat shaming, it has to be, I mean, it has to be dealt with caution. Otherwise, it is unethical and can undo the good that it targets to do. Then you see, we talk about sustainability education for behavioral change, starting with children and youth. But most of such education is again disconnected 
This is a logo from a global summit held in India some years back. And again, the Western toilet. This little boy shown here is, is from a slide that one of our volunteers made to show to the children in the village with, with which the children cannot connect at all. But then even the government of India, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, every ministry, it portrays in its manuals a lot of Indians that the masses cannot uh, identify with. At least let's have a variety. Let's not all make them Western looking. But this is how it is. And then, of course, the biggest problem of it all, you know, there's a there's a lot of imposition of Hindi when you see India is a subcontinent with so many, so many different languages. So we need to find a better solution to unity than imposition of Hindi. Um, so I can share with you what I have done in my NGO, which is called Friend in Need India Trust. Some days back for the World Toilet Day, we, we did our annual toilet technology discovery program. Nothing in the class. We show them videos and they have to discuss it. We give them pre-drawn pre uh, technology designs and we take them to the toilets so that they can identify each of the parts, ask their questions. So learning is done through asking of questions rather than teaching. Now, I, I have one thing to say. You see, I have been asking Professor Nagaratnam for some interns for me uh, because uh, I need interns, especially those who can read and write in both English and in Tamil, though we get interns from all over the world. Now, I find that among Indian graduates, there is a real fall in language skills. They neither know their mother tongue well, nor any other language well. So it is a mishmash, and it is kind of difficult to work in communication if you do not master a language, any language. You see, in Europe especially, we can learn a lesson because every school child has to be able to read, write, and speak three languages. So why not think in India of the local language, perhaps English, that is the most popular language in the world, but a language, another Indian language from another region in India, north, south, east, west, of course, this will take more capacity building, but why not? But that's just an idea. Most of the students who teach, even though they are empathetic in intention, often their communication is very preachy. It's very imposing because they don't learn enough about the concept, context. They, they have a superficial idea and assumptions. They do not observe enough. In order to be a good communicator, we need to be a good observer and a good listener. This is not easy. I'm the first one to admit it because I tend to talk too much and not listen enough. So this is, this is something we have to really work on. So given these complex problems, because sustainability in sanitation is so important for good health and therefore for economic sustainability, we need to get creative in terms of communication. Thank you very much. And I wish you a very, very good conference.